So looking at basically day two of of notes, power rule, which is a shortcut rule, a hugely important shortcut rule. Um, so think back to Friday. We learned that the definition we used we used this one rather than the one with H in it, but it's the same thing. We used the delta x one. So that was a slope formula where we tagged a limit on the front to, to shrink the, the x difference down to zero. So that way we would have slope at a point. This is an amazing concept. You may not think so, but it is. And it was the foundation for tons of advancements uh, in calculus. Obviously, this could be very tedious because here's the work shown. So we're not going to do it. But if you wanted to, to do the long way for finding the derivative of this, it's a mess. You got to plug in x plus h everywhere. Then you got to cube out or s square out the pieces. Uh, and even between here, there's several steps that most people would need to show. Let's see. Distribute the 7, distribute the negative sign, look for like terms to go away. A bunch of them do. H can divide into everybody. And then if, don't forget to take H goes to 0 so that anything with an H in it goes away. And so there's our derivative. Again, we don't, we're not going to do that by hand. We're not going to ask you to do that by hand because that's, that's awful. Yep. Um, tedious is the word in the notes there. And that was, you know, just, put just in quotes, that was just for a cubic, right? So what do we do with a fourth or a fifth or a sixth? Like, we don't, I mean, it's theoretically possible, but how long would it take to find a fifth or a ninth degree polynomial? Uh, no, thank you. Thankfully, our calculus founder saw a pattern which occurred when they did the higher powers. Um, oh, I don't know if you've seen enough. Maybe. So we're asking you to look at that function with its derivative. And can you see how to get... I can even match them up for you. x cubed became 3x squared. Minus 7x squared became minus 14x. 3x became 3. Well, somebody long ago did a whole bunch of these and figured out what the pattern was so they didn't have to keep doing this thing. So turn the page for the magic to happen. Power rule. You'll use this hundreds of times this year. Thousand might be an exaggeration, but maybe not. Definitely hundreds. A lot. A lot. If f of x equals x to the n, where n is any real number. Let's pause there for a minute. Any real number. So it can be positive or negative. Uh, it can be an integer or a fraction or a decimal. It just can't be imaginary. So for anything else, here's the pattern. The exponent comes down front. That's the n. So the exponent becomes um, the coefficient. I want to sound really fancy. Exponent becomes the coefficient. You know what? If there's a number out front, let's change how we word that. The exponent multiplies out front. Because if there's already a number there, we'll multiply by the number that's there. So it's not just the coefficient. It'll, it'll multiply onto the coefficient. And then decrease the exponent by 1. So this is way easier than the long way around. So example number one. If 
f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 8. Then f prime of x, the derivative. Let's, see, let's bring the 2 down front. Decrease the power by 1. Um, what about the exponent on 3x? Well, what's the exponent on the x there? 1. So 1 times 3 times x to the 0. It's a little bit overkill, but it fits the pattern. And what about the x on that last term? We could have an x to what power? We could put an x to the 0, and that wouldn't change anything. So then we can follow our own rule, 8 times 0. And after that, it doesn't really matter because it's, it's gone. Yeah. So to simplify that, 2x plus 3. Let's talk about a little bit more of a shortcut on those last two terms. Uh, f prime tells the slope. So what's the slope of y equals 3x? Think about what that graph would look like, or even 3x plus 8 for that matter. What's the slope of that line? Like back to algebra 1, what's the slope of... 3x plus 8? Uh, 3. Yeah. So the derivative is 3. So y you can do the power rule thing, or you can just think that, well, wait a minute, 3x plus 8, that has a slope of 3. The constant, so 8 is a constant. Um, the derivative is a rate of change. So the rate of change of a constant, how much is a constant changing? Zero. Uh, the slope thing still works if you did a graph of y equals 8. That slope is 0. So there's a couple ways to get 0 from a constant. If you remember rate of change, well, rate of change of a constant, that doesn't really even make sense. That's 0. The slope of y equals 8, that's 0. So you don't have to really do the, even the, the shortcut rule for those two. You can just know that the slope of 3x is 3 and the slope of 8 is 0. Number two, find the slope of the line tangent to the graph So that's fancy talk for the derivative. If g of x equals 5x to the ninth. So we bring the 9 down. Leave the 5 alone, but bring the 9 down. And then decrease the power by 1. 45x to the 8th. All right, example three is really like five examples all in one. Mm -hmm. So why don't you try those five examples, and then I will call on five people to tell us what they got. All Label what's the derivative. If you just leave that blank, then that sort of implies that that's h of x. That's not h of x, though. That's the derivative. So make sure you put the label on there. All right, the next three, um, they still follow the same rules, but there's some tricks we need to be careful about because we don't really do roots. We need them to be a power. So what we need to do first is to rewrite all of those as powers.
powers. So the cube root of x, how could I rewrite that as a power? Negative one third. Or one third. One third. What about x cubed in the in the denominator? Negative that would be the negative exponent. But not negative one third, just negative three. Oh yeah. Because the one third would be the root, the negative would be because it's in the denominator. And then what about a power would make it the fifth root of x squared in the denominator? Um, negative said. seven, or negative two over five. Negative two fifths. Okay, that's algebra. That was supposed to be the easy part of the problem. Calculus is easy, algebra is hard, right? So now we can use the power rule. They've got the powers there. So one third x to the, uh oh. Maybe calculus is easy, fractions are hard. What's one third minus one? Negative two thirds. Two thirds minus five x, whoops. Didn't bring the negative three down. Five times negative three, do it like that times x to the, what's 1 less than negative 3? Negative 4 minus 7 times negative 2 fifths times x to the negative 7 fifths. Clean that up a little bit here. 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds plus 15x to the negative 4, plus 14 fifths x to the negative 7 fifths. Still all one rule, it's just harder when there's negatives and fractions, or negative fractions. Number 5 is going to mess people up all year because it doesn't work like you think it should work. You can't just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the, of the bottom and be done with it. It doesn't work that way. Instead, you've got to make this one. Like, I can divide each of those by x squared. So I'm going to divide each term by x squared. So 2x to the fourth over x squared would be 2x squared. 3x cubed over x squared would be 3x plus 9, there's the easy one, minus 7. Kyle, what power will I have on x that goes with 7? Uh, Wait. Sorry, the two cows oh, are sitting next to each other. <laughs> That's okay. You misled him. We'll say you did that on purpose. Uh, Kyle, it's not one half. What's the power of x if we have x over x squared? It's not zero. X over x squared. What could I? Somebody help him out. Negative one. Negative one. Julia, how about that last term? 1 over x squared. How could I rewrite that one? <laughs> 1 over x squared? x is negative 2. Yeah, calculus is easy. Algebra is hard. That was all algebra. We have not taken a derivative yet. That was all algebra so that now we can do calculus. So there's five terms there, so we get to pick five more volunteers. Here we go, we get Kyle in here. The right Kyle. So work work that one and then I'll pick one per still learning names here.
<laughs> okay, five terms, five names. Question on those? Again, the, the algebra is harder than the calculus is. This symbol, I mean, you could probably guess what it means given what we're doing. You want to guess what that symbol means? Take a derivative. Maybe take the derivative of, we want to be like mathematically correct, I guess. Take the derivative of whatever's in parentheses. But I don't like what's in parentheses. I want to change that. Uh, Caleb, how could I rewrite the cube root of x in the denominator as x to some power? Like what power means the same thing as cube root in the denominator? Okay, wait, I don't want a derivative yet. I just want you to... Does anybody not quite like that answer? Negative, because it's in the bottom. Now we can take the derivative. So negative one-third, or the negative three is already there, times negative one-third, x to the negative four-thirds. So that would just be x to the negative 4 thirds. And I'm OK with that answer. But on a free response test, are you going to be able to recognize what's the right answer? Of those four answers, which of those is the same thing as our answer? A, B, C, or D? Um. C. Yeah. C. Algebra is easy. Algebra is hard. One of these years, I'm going to make a stamp with that on it. That way, when you make those kind of mistakes on the test, I can just stamp that on there. <laughs> All right, differentiability. Sounds fancy. I said it's not. It's really not. It's really not as fancy as it sounds. Differentiability. Just zoom out so you can see it. A function is differentiable at a point if the derivative of the function exists. So if you can take a derivative, then it's differentiable. Those, those are synonymous. Remember that the derivative of a function is the slope of the tangent line. So when would it not be differentiable? And there's three things that make it not differentiable. No, that would have a that would have a derivative, right? We looked at some of those. If y equals three x plus eight, and y prime is three. Let me just give these because it, it would take a while to probably guess them. If f if f has a discontinuity, at x equals a. 
So if if the function doesn't exist there, then it can't have a tangent line there. That's the easiest way to say it. If there is no function, there can't be a tangent line to a graph at a spot where there is no graph. So all those discontinuities like whole, jump, vertical asymptote, it can't have the slope of a tangent line if there's no graph there. Even if it's just at a point, then the derivative doesn't exist there. Uh, I think, well, that's one of the two easy ones. The second easiest one is if f has a corner, in quotes, or sharp turn, or the official word is a cusp, but we would accept any of those. And a picture, I think, would, would help see that. So that graph has a sharp turn at point A. The derivative means what's the slope of the tangent line? Well, how are you supposed to put a how are you supposed to put a tangent line when it's like a a peak? Like you don't there's no there's nowhere to put it. Like any other point, you know, a point down here, you could you have a nice tangent line. A point over here, have a nice tangent line. But at that peak, like, how do you balance that? You, you don't. There is no no derivative at x equals a because there is a, a cusp there or a sharp turn there. We do want to be careful. That thing has a derivative everywhere else. So you can't just say, oh, that function is not differentiable. You have to be specific and say it's not differentiable at x equals a. Everywhere else, it does have a derivative. All right, lastly, if f has a vertical tangent line, at x equals a. So a vertical tangent line. So the, the graph still exists. We meet the first criteria. Um, but like the cube root graph, this is, it has a, a point where it's going straight up. And so it does have a tangent line, but it's a vertical tangent line. And what's the slope of a vertical line? Zero. Not zero. Or doesn't Undefined. So if the slope is undefined, then the derivative is undefined. So there's no derivative at point A, even though there's a tangent line there. That's kind of the weird one. Like the first two make sense because if a derivative is a tangent line, then or the slope of a tangent line, then if there's no point, you can't have a tangent line. Or if the point's crazy, no tangent line. Point three has a tangent line, so the next question is, well, what's the slope? The slope's undefined, so the derivative is undefined, so there's not a derivative there. So the three reasons something might not be differentiable. That next statement just uses the, the different words. F has a corner or a sharp turn or a cusp. Uh, the official definition would be if the slope from the left is not equal to the slope from the right. It's like if you're coming along here and it's like, okay, that looks like a nice graph. But from the other side, so that's a cusp. And there is no derivative there. <clears throat> Some examples. State the values at which f is not differentiable given this function. So I'm looking at my possibilities. I'm looking for discontinuity, for corner, and for vertical tangent line. So if I got a denominator, 
x can't be negative 3. So without doing more work, I don't know if it's a whole or a vertical asymptote, but it doesn't matter. It's not differentiable at x equals 3, or negative 3, excuse me. I think if I did some more work, it would cancel, which would make it a whole, but that doesn't matter. There's no derivative there because there's no function there. Number two, if g of x equals the absolute value of that thing, then where is it not differentiable? OK, parent function, absolute value. So what are we worried about with absolute values? Sharp turns. So you know, like the parent function has a has a sharp turn in it, and I don't really know what absolute value of a square root looks like or a square looks like, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be some sharp turns, probably sharp turns where where this is equal to zero. So let's factor. 3 and x minus 2. So it's not differentiable at x equals 2 and 3 because there's a cusp there or a sharp turn there. Three. I kind of gave this one away already. A cube root, if you know what the parent function looks like, looks something like that. So that doesn't have any sharp turns. It's continuous everywhere. There's no, no holes, no jumps, nothing crazy. So is there a spot where that's not differentiable? Yeah, when the and the tangent line is straight up and down. So at x equals 0. Uh, another way to do that one is to actually take its derivative. So h is x to the 1 third. h prime is 1 third. x to the negative 2 thirds. And then you look at your derivative. What would you not be allowed to plug in to there? Zero, because then you'd be dividing by zero. So maybe you know what the graph looks like. Maybe you actually go ahead and take a derivative and say at x equals zero, h is not differentiable. Four is a bit of a trick question. State the value at which that polynomial is not differentiable. Okay, I give you the hint that it's a trick question. It's always differentiable because polynomials, I mean, I have no idea what this one looks like, but generally speaking, they don't have any sharp points, they're continuous. sharp points. Um, they're continuous everywhere. And there's no vertical tangent lines. Do we just write none? So you could say none or you could just say differentiable everywhere. Differentiable on all real numbers, something like that. So, polynomials are nice because they are always have derivatives. Nothing crazy going on. Number five, piecewise function. Um, before we go any further, um, what x value am I worried about for this piecewise function? Three, like 
x plus 2 is a polynomial. 4x minus 7 is a polynomial. So they're all good. But at 3, there might be something going on. The limit as x approaches 3 exists. Uh, I have no idea. Let's check part A and part B and see what we get. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left. Three plus two is five. The limit as x approaches three from the right. Twelve minus seven is five. So if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, then the limit exists. Continuity, remember the three step continuity? left limit equals right limit equals the function value. Well, we already have two-thirds of this fixed for us. Right limit equals left limit. Got that. f of 3, um, I would need to plug it into form A. 3 plus 2 is 5. So yes, it's continuous. One and two are true, but is it differentiable? Can you visualize what that graph would look like? Maybe not, probably not, but let's do it this way. Left of three, actually at three, we know they connect at five. What's the, what's the slope of the line on the left of 5? Different from the right. <laughs> Different from the right. To the left, it's a positive 1. To the right, it's a positive 4. So they match up, so it's continuous, but that's a sharp turn because the slopes are different. So for differentiability, this is a big deal. You have to check continuity first, like do they match up, but then also are their slopes the same? So three's out. So it's one and two only. Guessing six and seven will be easier because they got pictures. Number six, the graph a function is shown on the right. At which value of x is f continuous but not differentiable? Oof. Continuous but not differentiable. Um, maybe, maybe we make a table here. Keep up with this stuff. Can you, you can, but I, I don't want to lose track of what I'm doing here. So a is continuous. Is A differentiable? No. So I think that's my answer. Let's go through all of them, though, to make sure. Uh, part B, or letter B. Is B continuous? Is B con is, it con is the graph continuous at B? No, because there's a hole there. So if it's not continuous, it's like automatically not differentiable. Point C, is point C continuous? Yes. Is point C differentiable? Yes. Yeah, because you could you could do a tangent line there. Point D is not even continuous, so definitely not differentiable. And point E, continuous and differentiable. So yes, it was point A. It was continuous, but not differentiable. Why don't you answer question seven? Same question. Um, on the following, well, similar question. On which is f continuous but not differentiable? So it's intervals, but it's the same question. So find an interval where f is continuous on the entire interval but not differentiable.
look at the pictures. So which interval is continuous but not differentiable? A, B, C, or D? C. C is continuous but not differentiable because it has that uh, cusp in there. All right, at x equals 3, the function given by another piecewise function at x equals 3, it's undefined. No, it's not undefined. It's, it's defined right there, so that's out. Continuous but differentiable. Okay, we got to check continuity first. So continuity means from the left equals from the right. So from the left, that would be 9. From the right, 18 minus 9, also 9. So it is continuous. Um, part C, differentiable but not continuous, that doesn't even make sense. That's not even possible. Neither continuous nor differentiable? No, because it is it is continuous. So it's continuous. We just need to check the slope now from either side. So the left slope and the right slope. Well, the left slope, there we got this one in. The left slope, what's the derivative of x squared? Bring the 2 down, keep the x. And then at x equals 3, that slope would be 6. What's the slope of 6x minus 9? The 6. So at x equals 3, they have the same slope. So it is continuous and differentiable. Is it 3 squared 9? Yes. That's up here. 3 squared is 9, and 18 minus 9 is 9. So it is continuous. Oh, you were talking about the slope. Okay. So it looks like over at x equals 3, it takes off in a straight line. It looks something like that. So it's a smooth transition. That's what makes it differentiable. All right. Today's assignment is worksheet numero dos. Answers are posted for your edification.